ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸಚ್ಚರಿತ್ರ ದ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಬಾಬಾ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟು ರೆಸ್ಕ್ಯೂ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸರ್ಪೆಂಟ್ ಬೈಟ್ಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಒನ್ ಬಾಲಾ ಸಾಹೇಬ್ ಮಿರಿಕರ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಟು ಬಾಪು ಸಾಹೇಬ್ ಬೂಟಿ ನಂಬರ್ ತ್ರೀ ಅಮೀರ್ ಸಕ್ಕರ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಹೇಮಾತ್ ಪಂತ್ ಬಾಬಾಸ್ ಒಪೀನಿಯನ್ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಕಿಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಸರ್ಪೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರಿಮಿನರಿ ಹೌ ಟು ಮೆಡಿಟೇಟ್ ಆನ್ ಬಾಬಾ no one has been able to fathom the nature or the form of almighty even the vedas and the thousand tongued shesha are not capable to describe it fully the devotees also cannot know but only look at the form of the lord for they know that his feet are their only refuge they know no other method of attaining the supreme goal of life except meditating on the holy feet Hemat Pant suggests an easy way of devotion and meditation as follows As the dark fortnight of every month wears out gradually the moonlight also wanes in the same degree and on the new moon day we do not see the new moon at all Therefore when the bright fortnight begins people are very anxious to see the moon On the first day the moon is not seen and on the second day she emerges as a thin crescent then the people are asked to see the moon through the opening between the two branches of a tree and when they begin to see through this aperture eagerly the distant small crescent of the moon comes to their sight following this instance let us see baba's form look at baba's posture how fine it is he is sitting with his legs folded the right leg held across the left knee the fingers of his left hand are spread on the right foot on the toe are spread his two fingers the index and the middle ones by his posture baba seemed to say if you want to see my true form be egolus and most humble and meditate on my toe through the opening between index and the middle fingers and then you'll be able to see my light now let us turn to baba's life Shirdi has become a place of pilgrimage on account of Baba's stay there people from all quarters began to flock there and both the rich and the poor began to be benefited in more ways than one who can describe Baba's boundless love and his wonderful knowledge and his all pervasiveness blessed is he who could experience this sometimes baba observed long silence which was in a way his dissertation on brahma at other times he was pure consciousness bliss incarnate surrounded by his devotees sometimes he spoke in parables and at other times indulged in wit and humor at times he was quite calm and at times he seemed enraged sometimes he gave his teachings in a nutshell and at other times he argued at length many a time he was very direct in this way he gave varied instructions to many according to the requirement his life was therefore inscrutable beyond the ken of our mind intellect and speech our longing to see his face to talk with him and hear his leelas was never satisfied still we were overflowing with joy we can gauge the showers of rain capture the wind in a leather bag but who can measure his leelas now we deal here with one aspect of them that is how we anticipated or forestalled the calamities of his devotees and warned them in time om shri sai bala saheb mirikar bala saheb mirikar son of sardar kaka saheb mirikar was mamlatar of kopargaon he was going on tour to chitali on the way he came to shirdi to see sai baba when he went to the masjid and prostrated himself before the baba the usual conversation regarding health and other matter matters commenced when baba sounded a note of warning do you know our dwarka mai as bala saheb did not understand he kept quiet baba continued this is our dwarka mai where you are sitting she wards off all dangers and anxieties of the children who sit on her lap this masjid mai its presiding deity is very merciful 
she is the merciful mother of the simple devotees whom she will save in calamities once a person sits on her lap all her, his troubles are over he who rests in her shade gets bliss then baba gave him udi and placed his hand on his head when bala sahib was about to depart he again said do you know the lamba baba long gentleman that is serpent and then closing the left fist he brought it under the right elbow and moving his left arm like the hood of a serpent said he is so terrible that what can he do to the children of dwarka mai when the dwarka mai its presiding deity protects what can the serpent do all who were present there were curious to know the meaning of all this and its reference to mirika but none had the courage to ask baba about this then bala sahib saluted baba and left the masjid with shama baba called shama back and asked him to accompany bala sahib and enjoy the chitali trip shama came to bala sahib and told him that he would go with him according to baba's wish bala sahib replied that he need not come as it would be inconvenient shama returned to baba and told him what bala sahib said to him baba said all right do not go we should mean well and do well whatever is destined to happen will happen in the meanwhile bala sahib thought over again and calling shama asked him to accompany him then shama went again to baba and after taking his leave started with bala sahib in the tonga they reached chitali at 9 pm and encamped in the maruti temple the office people had not come so they sat in the temple talking and chit chatting bala sahib was sitting on a mat reading a newspaper his uparani that is upper dhotra was spread across his waist and on it was a snake was sitting unnoticed it began to move with a hissing sound which was heard by the peon he brought a lantern saw the snake and raised an alarm serpent serpent bala sahib was frightened and began to quiver shama was also stunned then he and others moved quickly and took sticks and clubs in their hands the snake got slowly down the waist and moved away from bala sahib and was immediately done to death thus this calamity which was prophesied by baba was averted and bala sahib devotion in baba was confirmed om shri sai bapu sahib buti a great astrologer named nana sahib dengle told bapu sahib buti who was then in shirdi today is an inauspicious day for you there is danger to your life this made bapu sahib restless when they as usual came to masjid baba said to bapu sahib what does this nana say he foretells death for you well you need not be afraid tell him let us see how death kills then later in the evening bapu sahib went to his privy for easing himself where he saw a snake his servant saw it and lifted a stone to strike at it bapu sahib asked him to get a big stick but before the ser- servant returned with the stick the snake was seen moving away and soon disappeared bapu sahib remembered baba's words of fearlessness Om Shri Sai Amir Sakkar Amir Sakkar was a native of the village Korhale in Koper Gaon taluk he belonged to the butcher caste he worked as a commission agent in Bandra that is Mumbai and was well known there he once suffered from rheumatism which gave him much pain he then remembered Allah God left his business and went to Shirdi and prayed to Baba to relieve him from his malady baba then stationed him in the chavadi the chavadi was then a damp unhealthy place unfit for such a patient any other place in the village or korale itself would have been better for amir but baba's words was the command the chief medicine baba did not allow him to come to the masjid but fixed him in the chavadi every morning and evening Every alternate day Baba went to the chavadi in a procession and slept there so Amir got Baba's contact very often Amir stayed there for full 9 months and then he got a disgust for the place so one night he 
left the place and came to Kopargaon and stayed in a dharmashala. There he saw an old dying fakir who asked him for water. Amir brought it and gave it to him. As soon as he drank it, he passed away. Now Amir was in effects. He thought that if he went and informed the authorities, he would be held responsible for the death. As he was the first and the sole informant and knew something about it, he repented, repentant for his action, that is, leaving Shirdi without Baba's permission and prayed to Baba. He then determined to return to Shirdi and same night he retreated, remembering and muttering Baba's name all the way and reached Shirdi before daybreak and became free from anxiety. Then he lived in the Chavadi in perfect accordance with Baba's wishes and orders and got himself cured. One night it so happened that Baba cried at midnight, O Abdul, some devilish creature is dashing against the side of my bed. Abdul came with a lantern, examined Baba's bed but found nothing. Baba asked him to examine carefully all the place and began to strike the ground with his satka. Seeing this leela of Baba, Amir thought that Baba might have suspected some serpent there. Amir could know by close contact with Baba the meaning of his words and actions. Baba then saw, saw near Amir's cushion something moving. He asked Abdul to bring in the light and when he brought it, he saw the serpent coiled up there, moving its head up and down. Thereupon, the serpent was immediately beaten to death. Thus Baba gave timely warning, warning and saved Amir's life. Om Shri Sai Hemat Pant, Scorpion and Serpent At, the, at Baba's recommendation, Kaka Sahib Dikshit was daily reading the two works of Sri Ekanath Maharaj, that is Bhagwat and Bhavrat Ramayan, and Hemat Pant had the good fortune to be one of the audience. When the reading of the work was going on, once when a portion from the Ramayana relating to Hanuman's testing Rama's greatness according to his mother's instructions was being read, all the listeners were spellbound. Hemat Pant was one of them. A big scorpion, none knew where it came from, jumped and sat on the right shoulder of Hemat Pant on his uprani, that is upper dotra. First, it was not noticed. But as the Lord protects those who are intent on hearing his stories, he, he casually cast a glance over his right shoulder and noticed it. It was dead silent, not a bit moving here or there. It seemed as if it also enjoyed the reading. Then, by the God's grace, Hemat Pant, without disturbing the audience, took the two ends of his daughter, folded them and brought them together enclosing the scorpion within. Then he went out and threw it into the garden. On another occasion, some persons were sitting in the upper floor of Kaka Sahib's wada. Just before nightfall, when a serpent crept through a hole in the window frame and sat coiled up, a light was brought. Though it was first dazzled, yet it sat still and moved its head up and down. Then many persons rushed there with sticks and cudgels, but as it sat in an awkward place, no blow could be dealt. But hearing the noises of men, the serpent went out hastily through the same hole. Then all the persons present there felt relieved. Om Shri Sai Baba's opinion, one devotee named Muktaram then said that it was good that the poor creature escaped. Hemat Pant challenged him, saying that the serpent should better be killed. There was a hot discussion between them. The former contending that serpents and such creatures should not be killed, the later that they should be. As night came on, the next the discussion came to an end without any decision being arrived at. Next day, the question was referred to Baba, who gave his settled opinion as follows. God lives in all beings and creatures, whether they be serpents or scorpions. He is the great whirlpooler of the world. And all beings, serpents, scorpions, etc. obey his command, unless he wills it, nobody can do any harm to others. The world is all dependent on him, and no one is independent. So, we should take pity and love all creatures, leave off killing and be patient. The Lord, God is the protector of all. 
బౌ టు శ్రీ సాయి పీస్ బీ టు ఆల్